Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Scotland and we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel many times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years, many different styles, and I think it's fair to say that this brewery are, you know, just very well rounded. Whatever they seem to try goes very, very well for them and we've had some great beers from them over the years. I would certainly count them as one of my favourite Scottish breweries. Now, the beer that we're going to have a look at today is quite an interesting one. I have actually tried this beer on tap in their tap room very recently and I really enjoyed it. But it's a style that they do very, very well in my experience. And this is one that they said themselves they felt was the best in that style category that they've ever done. So to get a can of this and do a proper sit down review for you, I think should be pretty interesting. But like I say, I know this beer is good. Hopefully it's as good as I remember. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review. And as always, I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So uh, yeah, for this review then, we are going to head south to the Scottish Borders region. We're going to go to Gallish Hills to be specific. And that means that we're going to have a look at another beer from Tempest Brewing Company. So this particular beer is called Green Whip. It comes in at 8% ABV. And this is a New England Hazy Imperial Double whatever you want to call it, IPA. Now, this beer was released uh, at the beginning of May 2022, and like I said, Tempest have said this is one of the best, if not the best, uh, IPA that they've, that they've ever done. So, you know, I have to review this on the channel. Uh, I can't remember what was the, the la what the last beer was that we reviewed from Tempest. It was maybe the Longer White Cloud, which is basically a big version of their regular uh, long white cloud New Zealand paleo that they have and that was absolutely lovely so uh, yeah to try this one I think should be uh, to try this one on the on the channel for you I think should be very very nice but uh, yeah let's crack on with this one then and see how we go always nice to review the new Tempest beers here on Rampant Lion Reviews so as always with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the video description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Tempest Brewing Company in the past and we will no doubt add more to that list at some point in the near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefecture whatever it is you happen to be interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the scottish beers that i've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit more about Tempest Brewing Company. So Tempest Brewing Company was founded back in 2010 by Gavin and Anika Mikkeljohn. So Anika had trained as a chef in New Zealand, but the couple returned to Scotland back in 2007 to run the Cobbles Bar in Kelso in the Scottish Borders. So Gavin had previously worked for the Whistler Brewing Company in British Columbia over in Canada and so he had a real appreciation for craft beer but he'd also taken some brewing courses in Sydney and Australia and he home brewed in his garage in Wellington in New Zealand as well using a 50 litre kit and any of you who know about the craft beer scene in New Zealand will know that Wellington is an awesome beer town and that is somewhere that I do need to go and visit. Uh, but Gavin was joined early on at the brewery by Alan Rice who is the business development manager and he previously worked for Stuart Brewery in Edinburgh and he had also lived in New Zealand and Australia for a period of time as well. So these guys had a very very kind of similar outlook on what kind of stuff they wanted to do with Tempest Brewing Company. Uh, but the brewery was originally housed in old dairy buildings in Kelso and the brewery that they had there was largely kind of homemade and engineered to produce big beers on a really kind of shoestring budget but their beers proved to be very very popular and so they moved to their current and bigger home at the Tweed Bank Industrial Estate in Gallus Shields not long after. Um, but in June of 2019 they submitted plans to build a new brewery building with a bar and restaurant on the site of the former Eldon Mill which is very close to the Tweed Bank train station. When I was down there recently I could see that this place was still kind of under construction um, but these days they do have a tap room at the brewery in the Tweed Bank Industrial Estate and it's actually a really nice little tap room. Uh, you'll see uh, that video will probably publish, have published before this one so you can go and check out my kind of brewery visit that I did there but they've got a lovely little tap room there that opens 
on uh, Fridays and Saturdays. So do go and check it out. But uh, like I said to you, for me, Tempest Brewing Company, uh, they do some really, really nice beers. Probably the, the best ones I've had. My favourite was Old Parochial, which is their Scotch Ale. That's an awesome, awesome beer. All the leaves are brown and the Imperial Brown Ale is really good. And on the lighter end of things, you know, uh, the Modern Hellas is a really nice kind of session beer. But the, uh, the Long White Cloud, I think, is good. And Brave New World is a really good old school. Uh, West Coast IP, but they're always releasing. They usually release one or two new beers every month, and they do thing. You know, they do these kind of modern fruity, juicy sours, but they also do things like this. You know, the New England IPAs and uh, and that kind of thing. So yeah, lots of different beers that you can check out from Tempest Brewing Company. As I say, this brewery for me is just generally speaking a very well rounded. Uh, craft brewery so check out what you can from them but yeah the big beasts are always very good the big malty things but their their more sessionable beers are very good as well but as of may 2022 when i'm filming this review for you these guys have produced 130 different kinds of beer and like i say they're just a very well-rounded brewery in my opinion but um yeah that's all i can really tell you about tempest brewing company for the moment if you want to learn more about these guys you can check out the brewery website you can follow them on facebook and instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, let's crack on then and have a wee look at the beer itself. So I will just like to have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up. As you can see, there is the Green Whip. Looks very nice. You can see it's these kind of lupulin oil sort of gloopy things. But there you can see Tempest Brewing Company. On the side, they do have the Lightning. <clears throat> And the glass there, the Tempest, of course, is a weather phenomenon. But uh, yeah, really nicely presented can, this one. So as you can see, it's a 440 milliliter can. I bought this one at the Caledonian Craft Beer Merchant over in Dunfermline. I think I paid about £6.50 for this one. So that translates to roughly, what's that going to be? About Just a little bit over, maybe €7.50, seven, maybe seven Euros 50, about 75 Swedish kroner. Uh, so seven euros fifty, and maybe in the region of like eight dollars, eight dollars twenty five American, something like that. But it tells you a little bit about the beer on the back. It says our modus operandi means we are always striving to create our perfect beer. But for Green Whip, we tore up the proverbial rule book in the name of reaching new levels of flavour and aroma. A modified, a modified low temperature whirlpool of nugget and citra provided an exceptional base layer of flavour and bitterness to build on. Then during fermentation, we optimised hopping uh, rates temperature and yeast performances to create the precise character we were looking for. Multiple hop additions starting with Columbus and Comet ending with a Citra Cryo and Cryo Pop blend gave us the mind melting mix of dank resinous with Citra and tropical fruit. So uh, yeah, this one, as I say, I know this beer is good, but I'm curious to see if it's different from the can and things, but uh, it, this is an awesome New England double IP, but we've had good New Englands from uh, Tempest in the past, but this one as I say, was one that they were particularly uh, proud of. This is another cool thing to point out as well, that Tempest are part of the 1% for the planet. So they're trying to kind of, uh, can we say, greenify, like make their processes more environmentally friendly. But uh, yeah, beautifully presented beer, this one, as you can see, plain silver top on the can, an 8% New England double IP at the Green Whip from Tempest Brewing Company. Um, there were two things I wanted to say about the hops in this one. So Cryo Pop. Is a blend I've come across once or twice recently. So this is a blend of concentrated lupulin oils from Yakima Valley hops. It gives between 18 and 22% alpha acid and it'll give you a lot of kind of tropical and stone fruit flavours and aromas. But Comet, on the other hand, is uh, used commonly. Uh, this, this one, as I say, is Columbus Comet Citra and Cryopop and it's also got Nugget in the base. But Comet is used commonly in different craft lagers actually. But it was grown originally in Oregon about 40 years ago. But it's been recently grown in Germany. But it gives you a big grapefruit and resinous note and between 9 and 12% alpha acid apparently. So it's quite an interesting hop. I've not had Comet all that often. But I remember it can give you a bit of pineapple as well. Uh, but yeah, let's crack this guy open and see how we go. The Green Whip from Tempest Brewing Company and 8% New England Hazy Imperial Double IPA. So um, yeah, let's crack this guy open and we'll see how we go. Oh, this looks good. <clears throat> I still feel my voice is going a little bit. But anyway, so let me just line the can up again so that my OCD is happy. But uh, yeah, anyway, <clears throat> as you can see, 
it's poured pretty much as you would expect from a New England IPA. So you can see that the head on this one is about two thirds of a finger. I would describe it as being a kind of more bumpy white head, but I would say it is perfect white. In terms of colour, this beer I think is a very kind of deep yellow. It looks a little bit brighter to you guys on the camera than it does to me with the naked eye. But I would describe this one. I always like comparing New England IPAs to different fruit juices. To me, this looks like a very kind of bright mango juice. Uh, but yeah, remember the colour of your beer depends on one, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, the length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised, thus you get a darker colour of beer. Any barrel that you do or any adjuncts that you put in will affect the colour of your beer too. But when it comes to New England hazy IPAs, you don't really need to care about that so much. But um, yeah, <clears throat> this one certainly looks the part of a New England uh, IPA, the colour of it is absolutely lovely. But yeah, in terms of the level of haziness that we get from this one, it's certainly not the soupiest and gloopiest of New England's that I've come across. So remember, the haziness in these beers depends on the oak content, the wheat content, and to a degree, the um, the yeast that you use as well. And um, there's not really a rule that as you go, you know, as you go further up the alcohol scale, you should get more. Uh, haziness out of these beers because there's more oat and wheat content in the malt base. Uh, no, it doesn't really work like that actually. So um, yeah, the character, the this one certainly, it's not the soupiest and gloopiest that I've come across. It is more <clears throat> kind of somewhere in the middle of the hazy spectrum for uh, for an eight percenter. So uh, yeah, one or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass, a few little ones going up toward the bottom of the head there, and you can see the head has just faded away to be a nice kind of thin foamy layer. But other than that, I don't think we need to say anything else about the appearance of this beer. So let's have a closer look at the aroma of this one and uh, just see how we go. Very curious about this, because I do remember it is pretty nice. Yes, <laughs> yeah, lovely smelling beer. So the first impression of this one is, uh, and as I've said to you before, there are six elements for me that I think you need to care about in uh, a New England IPA. So this is the kind of farmhouse -y, yeasty character, the rye leaning grainy side of things. Those are more common in American brewed New Englands. Uh, but then you've also got wheaty bitiness, oaty creaminess, barley malt bread, and the kind of sweet element too. For me, this beer actually smells kind of, it has quite a lot of, I would say, kind of barley malt character. That's the first thing that springs to mind for me with this beer. I get a lot of barley malt out of this one, but you also get some really nice kind of smooth <clears throat> oaty characters out of this beer as well. So um, yeah, first impression of this one is it's quite a barley malt leaning New England IPA, but it's got some really nice juiciness to it. And the green component for me is a blend of kind of floral and, uh, and grassy sort of things. It's quite well balanced in that regard, but that is just a basic first impression of the aroma with this one. But uh, yeah, let's have a little look at that aroma a wee bit more in depth and see how we get on. So yeah, if you take this aroma in very, very deeply, you do get a nice, um, you do get, um, you get a very nice uh, kind of little bit of a fresh white bread bread crust out of this, you know, that kind of hedgehog roll, you get a little bit of that in there. On top of that, you can smell the fresh white bready uh, you do you do get the kind of fresh white bready layer um, and yeah I think that works that does work very very nicely um, so yeah yeah as we say you've got a really nice fresh white bread bread crust you can feel, smell the layer of the barley malt bread, that fresh kind of fluffy white bread and on top of that you get the wheat, the wheat is just thickening out but the wheat in this beer is actually very smooth and at the back of the nose you do get a little touch of that wheaty bitiness but as I always say wheat can be it can do a few different things if you can either smoothen it out or give you a bit of spiciness and bitiness and I think in this one it's really acting as a kind of smoothening agent absolutely um yeah yeah on top of this on top of that, you start to get the oaty layer. And the oaty layer is quite interesting in this one because it smells quite thick. Now, as I've said to you before, um, the oats are a very good indicator of how old your New England IPA is. So, um, the, for me, the New England IPA, um, for the oaty side of things, the creamier the oats are, the, the fresher your beer is. But the, slightly, the more dry they are, the older it is. You can smell on this one, it's still pretty creamy, but there's a little hint of that kind of dryness and slight sweetness from the oats creeping into this one. So this beer, I think, is maybe about a month old or something like that, maybe very slightly more. 
Uh, I can't, as I say, I can't remember exactly when this was released. I'm reviewing this for you at the very end of May 2022. I think it might have been released at the very end of April, very start of May. Um, so yeah, you can smell a good bit of the creaminess in there, but you also get just a little bit of the dryness kind of creeping through. Uh, on top of that, there's certainly an element of sweetness to this one. I get a little bit of that kind of butter candy, uh, butterscotch, uh, you know, Werther's Original type flavour out of this one. I'm pretty sure uh, it has just a little hint of biscuit too, but I think this one, if I remember rightly, they told me in the in the tap room that it had, uh, it had what was it, um, a Golden Promise in it, and that would make sense. We know that Golden Promise gives you that Werther's Original and kind of biscuity note in this beer, in their beers when it's used. So yeah, you can certainly get a wee bit of that out of this one. Other than that, I don't think there's anything to say about the malty side of this beer. Um, maybe there's a little bit of a Jacob's Cream Cracker or something in there, but no, I think we've covered the malty side of this one quite well. So green component then and the hoppy side of the beer. For me, yeah, for me, the green component of this beer, um, you've got a little bit of earthiness uh, to this one, but not overly much. Uh, but there's a big, deep floral aromatic uh, component to this one, and that's going to be the use of these lupulin cryo oils, um, or incognito as they're calling them. I'm, I'm not up to date with the hop technology, I have to say, but it's got that nice, big, deep green floral component to it. But you've also got a very bright grassiness there, which I would associate mostly with citra, uh, actually. So yeah, the green component of this one is quite nice, deep floral aromatic notes, very bright, kind of zesty grassiness. Uh, but yeah, it works. It works really nicely. I like it. Uh, yeah, so on top of the, um, yeah, on top of the, on top of the, the green component of this beer, the fruitiness, I actually find the fruitiness is quite, um, it's almost a bit mild. It doesn't jump out of the glass at you, which is kind of interesting. It's actually a more kind of wet, juicy sort of thing. Um, yeah. So for me, there's a little bit of a, uh, there is a little bit of a, uh, I, I do get a little touch of the passion fruit from the, the citra, but I get a big, big kind of oily and juicy mango out of this one. Uh, I'm not getting so much in the way of a dry apricot this time, but like an oily pineapple. A little bit of an oily kind of pineapple in this one. Maybe, you know, I'm not getting these kind of dry apricot papaya type notes out of it. So, yeah. Yeah, aroma-wise, this one, it's quite, for me, there's a lot, as I say, mainly passion fruity and mainly mango, like quite a juicy side of things, not getting these slightly drier tropical fruit notes. I'm trying to see if there's uh, anything else. For me, the fruity side of this is actually quite straight shooting. I mean, I get a little bit of that kind of lemony, limey kind of thing that you can often get from, uh, from Citra, but it's not overly pungent if that makes sense this is the fruity side of this beer for me is a big juicy mango there's a wee bit of a pineapple in there a wee bit of passion fruit as well but i'm not getting these kind of drier components and there's just a wee hint of that lemony limey character that you can often get but uh yeah the way that this beer goes together i think is really really nice um yeah lovely aroma this one it's a bit as i say it's not the most jump out of the glass at you type of aroma but uh yeah it's certainly quite an interesting one. The more and more that I smell of this beer, the more it comes across as being just like a really big, oily, juicy uh, thing rather than anything else. But as I always say, take a wee bit of time to um, take a wee bit of time mm -hmm. to just ponder over the aroma of this one before you get uh, before you get stuck into it. So yeah, let's have a taste of this beer. This one is the Green Whip, uh, an eight percent New England. Yeah, an 8% New England Hazy Imperial Double, whatever you want to call it, IPA, from Tempest Brewing Company in Gala Shields in the Scottish Borders. Let's get stuck in. Slanger, Skull, cheers. Oh, yeah. That's pretty nice. That is pretty damn nice. Um... Yeah, so they say, as, as I say, if I've remembered what they've said on social media correctly, they say this is their best IP that they've ever done. I think this is really solid. It is potentially the best New England one that they've ever done. But I think, you know, Longer White Cloud and um, Marmalade on Rye, those are two very, very solid 
you know, sort of West Coast the IPAs. Uh, and I don't know, that's it's, it maybe is again, Brave New World as well, I also very much like. Um, but this is really nice, and it's quite diff You know, the, the thing I always remember about the Tempest IPAs, the thing I always remember about Tempest IPAs is they were always very kind of soft and kind of leaning towards the creamy side of things. It's quite, um, this one is quite similar in that regard. It's a really solidly done uh, New England IPA, this one. Just a very soft, kind of oaty leaning, creamy New England IPA. So if you like the sort of treehouse um, New England IPAs from the States, then this is going to be one that's kind of right up your uh, your street. Actually, I had one from Verdant a few videos back that was... It was slightly more creamy than this one. This has a wee bit more kind of barley malt to it and you can get the wheat thickening the beer out as well. But uh, yeah, this is a really, really solid uh, New England double IPA, this one. I wouldn't expect any less of uh, Tempest, of course. But um, yeah, it's a bit... I'm not sure if I would quite say that this is the best uh, IPA that they've done, but you know, for me, a lot of the times when I try breweries, even with some of these Swedish ones that I drink recently, it's always the first beer that I remember from these guys and you know Marmalade on Rye I think was the first double IP I tried from these guys and it was just beautiful 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 beer so there's always that nostalgia factor in there but what I will say about this is that it's a very very solid uh, New England double IPA this one Poten potentially it could be the best New England that they've done so but being the best IPA generally they've done I'm not really I'm not that sure about that one but it is a lovely beer this and it's definitely worth trying it actually feels it doesn't feel quite as creamy uh, now in the can as it did on tap in the, the brewery in fact so you can check out my review that I did in the out and about video if you want to, to see what it was like there as well but yeah let's uh, my first impression of this one is it's quite a smooth very slightly creamy New England IPA the fruitiness is nice and soft and then you've got a lovely kind of green component to it as well um, I like this I really do like how this goes together So, um, yeah, the way that this beer goes about its business, I think, is um, is really nice. So, we'll break this down and describe it as we always do. The middle third of your palate, you get a nice little bit, <clears throat> you get a little bit of that kind of fresh hedgehog, white bready bread crust there. That forms the backbone of the beer. Further forward on that middle third of the palate, you potentially get a little bit of a kind of, you do get a little touch of a, what I would say, is a kind of Jacob's cream cracker sort of thing. You can feel that. But on top of that, you actually get quite a, you get a layer of like fluffy white bread and it's actually quite dense in that regard. You do get a big dense layer of fluffy uh, white bread coming out of this one, which I, I do like. Um, so that's that's nice. You can really feel that in this beer. But on top of that, you can feel the wheat and the wheat really thickens out the whole beer underneath the oaty side of things. So yeah, you've got that bread crust, a little bit of cracker, quite a thick and dense barley malt bready layer in this. Then you can feel the wheat on top of that just uh, thickening it all out. So yeah, the way that this beer goes about its um, goes about its malty base, I think is quite nice because I think it finds a good balance between the, the barley malt side of things and the other to the beer so yeah the wheat is quite a smoothening the, the wheat in this beer is very very smooth but then on top of the wheat you get that nice big kind of creamy oaty character uh, coming out and I think that goes together really well so the oats for me are interesting because as I always say oats are an indicator of how fresh your New England IP is the creamier they are the fresher it is the drier they are the the older the beer is so it's almost like you've got a circle in the middle of your palate with this one so you can feel that kind of big creamy sort of thick oaty layer in this one so in the middle down the middle of your palate it has that sort of slightly wet porridgey kind of thing but as you move out toward the edge of the palate it does show you a little bit of the dryness and like I say I think this beer's been in the can maybe four or five weeks something like that so it makes sense that you're starting to get a little bit of that kind of slightly sweeter dry oaty character to this one so keep that in mind but um yeah on top of that oaty layer, you do get, right in the dead centre of your palate, you get a little bit of that kind of Werther's original butter candy, butterscotchy uh, sort of thing. So that's definitely there, but as you move out from the dead centre of your palate, you'll get one or two little hints of like a McVitie's digestive biscuity kind of thing. And that is the kind of signature of Golden Promise. That's what you're always going to get from that. So yeah, that's definitely worth pointing out. So... Um, on the 
Other than that, I don't think there's anything we need to say about the middle third of the palette. Let's focus on the back third of the palette then. So the border region between middle and back third of the palette, you get a little bit of a kind of bready build up there, which I think is quite nice. You get that little bit of just bready build up. Then um, the base of the back third of the palette, you get the bread crust and the bread crust is a wee bit more kind of grainy. Remember, the more bitter flavours come out toward the back of the palette. On top of that, you get a taller uh, white bready layer. And again, it just has a little bit more... It just has an element of a slightly bigger graininess to it. Then on top of that, you've got a bit of the kind of um, you've got a bit of the kind of wheaty bitey uh, sort of thing coming out of this one. Uh, so yeah, the, the wheatiness shows its bitey side on the the back third of the palate for sure. On top of all of that, you've got that more dense white bready. You've got that more. Um, <clears throat> You get that the yeasty character of this one, so you've got that big dense white bready sort of thing to it. You get the bread crust and the crackery and the sort of woody things um, sitting all around it. So yeah, I like how that um, how that goes together in uh, in this beer. You, the yeastiness in this comes out a wee bit more the further you go into the aftertaste. So you get a bit of that woody crackery kind of thing to this. Um, but yeah. I think this beer for me, it really leans, it's got a good balance. It shows you a bit of wheatiness, a bit of oatiness and a bit of the barley malt bread. So I think it goes together really well. So on the back third of the palate, you've got that, uh, you can feel the flavour is definitely taller. And then as you come further forward into the middle third of the palate, the flavours just condense down a wee bit uh, and just squash together. But I think that's everything we need to say about the malty and uh, yeasty side of this beer. Let's focus on the hoppy side of things then. So back corners of the palate, there's a distinctive bit of earthiness to this one. And I think that's going to be the Columbus that's giving you that. And as you move further forward along the side of the palate, you do get um, a little bit of that kind of signature spicy floral aromatic sort of thing. Remember with IPAs, you have three different types of hoppings. You've got early edition hops within the first hour in your wort boil, they give you pretty much all bitterness. The late addition hops within the last half hour of your wort boil, that gives you a little bit of bitterness, but mainly flavour and aroma. Then dry hopping after you've completed the wort boil, that is all flavour and aroma. New England IPAs like, the, like this tend to rely on the latter two, whereas West Coast IPAs, old school West Coast IPAs actually, we should say, uh, rely on all three of those. Uh, but yeah, with the Columbus in this, I think maybe they've added Columbus in a little bit as an early. Oh, but it does say on the side here, um, they say they've got a whirlpool of nugget and citrus, so but it doesn't say exactly when they added it. But I'd be so, you know, Columbus. I think would be the the would be the early edition hop for me. You know, give you a little bit of that spiciness, but you can certainly get quite a bright floral aromaticity, which I'm guessing is the nugget. I've had nugget a few times, but you also get a bit of spiciness out of it, which is going to be the Columbus. But round the front curve of the palate, you've got a little bit of that lighter grassiness there, and it does have a wee bit of a zesty character to it. And I would say. That is most likely to be citra. Citra has quite a zesty, grassy side to it. But yeah, green component for me, quite bright and floral and just a little touch spicy. I think that sums it up quite nicely. Let's do the front third of the palette and the fruity side of things. So the border region between front third and middle third of your palette, you get a little bit of a bready build up again in there. So yeah, a little bit of a bready build up in there, kind of bread crust, but then the base of that front third of your palate, soft white bread, a little bit of a kind of oaty creaminess as well. Um, I think it, that goes together really nicely. And on top of that, you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters just roll their way, <clears throat> roll their way out of the beer. Um, yeah, I think it goes, it does go together really nicely in that sense so let's focus on what we're actually getting from the fruity side of the beer but i like the kind of smoothness and stuff you get on that very front third of your palate so um yeah front third of your palate with this one then on the at the back of that front third of your palate there is a wee bit of a stronger passion fruit there but as you move further forward it really develops this big big juicy mango sort of thing um, I think as you move further forward, you get a kind of, as you move toward the middle of that front third of your palate, it really gets uh, a little bit more like an oily kind of pineapple. And then is underneath, it's interesting, because as you reach the dead centre of the palate, you've got this, you've got the, if we start at the back, you've got that big kind of oily passion fruit, then a big, big juicy mango in there. And then as you reach the middle of the palate, you start to get a bit of a drier, there's a wee bit of a dry apricot, you know, it's almost very, like a little bit sultana-like actually, you get a bit of that dry fruit there. Then the front half of the front third of your palate, you start to get the big kind of lemony, limey, zesty notes from the, 
from the citra. Um, but then on top of that, you've got this kind of juicy pineapple, which I think is the Comet. I always remember Comet giving you a bit of that more kind of juicy pineapple -y note. So the fruity side of this one's quite interesting. It's very wet in some ways, very wet and juicy, but you've also got a wee bit of dryness to it and you also have that kind of lemony limey note there. So yeah, for me, passion fruit, big juicy mango, a little bit of a dry apricot-y, sultana-y type thing. Then you've got the lemony limey characters of the citra, but on top of that lemony limey note, you've got a wee bit of pineapple coming out of this one. So yeah, this is it's interesting just how the fruity side of this beer goes together. That's quite quirky, I think, in this beer. I tell you something though, I would love to see them. Uh, I'd love to see them do something like this, like take the base of this beer, and you know put maybe um, you know put some New Zealand or, or other Australian hops in this one. Like you know Strata would be very good with this, but that's American. Uh, what's the one? Enigma. That's the one I'm thinking of from Australia. This would be really interesting with the likes of Enigma, Nelson Sovien, or some of the more tropical uh, New Zealand hops, um, you know, like Rewaka and Rakal and things like that. It would be really interesting. Kohatu, with that kind of pineapple, you know, it would work very well too. Because, yeah, Tempest, you know, whenever I think of Tempest, I always think about New Zealand hops. They love New Zealand hops there. So taking the base of this beer and playing around with some New Zealand hops, I think, could be an interesting project for Tempest. But uh, yeah, this one for me is really nice. The, the fruity side of it, as I say, quite tropical leaning, but it also is balanced out with a good bit of, wee bit of lemony limey note. And particularly before the front edge of the palate, you do just get a wee hint of that kind of limey note out of this beer. But yeah, fruity side of things, I think, goes together very, very well. Um, yeah, I think that's everything we need to say about the flavour of this beer. So like I say, it's a kind of well-balanced uh, New England IPA this one uh, but I think yeah it's got a good balance between the barley malt the wheat and the oats it shows you a little bit of everything and the fruity side is quite a wet sort of slick uh, can, it has that sort of wet slick character but yeah on the um, let's have a little look at the mouthfeel then just to round off this review so yeah um, for me yeah this one isn't quite as creamy as it was on tap it actually has quite a bit of an oily slick character so for me this beer is kind of right in the middle of the spectrum, an oily, slick New England IPA. The carbonation is very smooth. It feels very, very clean, but you know, in Scotland, as I always say, we're very proud of our tap water. In the Borders region, they've also got very, very good water. So not, it doesn't surprise me that this beer feels very, very clean and it has that sort of slick, oily vibe. But in fairness, when I think about it, I'm pretty sure I have had um, you know, creamier ones from Tempest, but this beer has, it's not a million miles away from the likes of Longer White Cloud and things in terms of the oiliness that this beer has. It's not madly far away from that. And that is more of a West Coast beer, that one. Uh, but yeah, in terms of IBUs, I think this is a fairly standard sort of 30 IBU uh, IPA. Yeah, I think 30, maybe 40 at an absolute push, but I think this is a standard 30 IBU. New England IPA. The malt, as we said, very well balanced between the kind of barley malt, the and the barley malt. It's got a bit of dryness from the barley malt on the bottom, but then the wheat and the oats thicken everything out and cream it and cream it up. But then the fruity side of this thing is kind of wet and slick too. But uh, yeah, this is a very very nice New England IPA. This one I do like this, and if they can take this base and play around with it with some New Zealand and Australian and other random hops, then I think um, this could turn out very very nicely. But uh, yeah, I think that's everything we need to say about this one. So this was the Green Whip, an 8% New England Hazy Imperial Double, whatever you want to call it, IPA from Tempest Brewing Company in Gala Shields and the Scottish Borders. Always cool to review new beers from these guys. And as I say, go and check out their tap room and my out and about video that I did a wee while back from them. But yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comment section below. Let me know what your favorite beers are from Tempest Brewing Company as well. And we will no doubt return to these guys at some point in the near future when I'm back in the motherland. But until the next time, stand just now, check out my social media, check out theirs, and I'll see you soon. Slanja, skull, and cheers.